Hi guys, I'm Eleanor Richardson, or Isabel, as you'll soon know me in my newest vlog of Chains by Lori Hales Anderson. It's pretty much about a girl a little younger than me fighting for her freedom that has been stolen away from her by the Lockdowns. It's a great read and hopefully you guys will tune in for my next three previews of the beginning, middle, and end of Chains. Thank you. Hi, I'm Isabel, just Isabel. Earlier, I was trying to talk to Mama. She said the best time to talk to Ghost was in the morning, but she never responds. I don't know what to do. Miss Mary Finch died just out of nowhere. Her nephew came, took away all her possessions, and I guess I'm included in those possessions. We're supposed to be free. Miss Mary Finch said we were free, but I guess that doesn't matter anymore since her lawyer's in Boston. He has all the papers, and her nephew's not going to wait until he comes back. <sighs> I was at Miss Mary's funeral today, praying as I should be, and then... He just snatched us up. I'm supposed to be free. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to be a slave. Then the worst part came. He took us to Jenny's pub. I guess she's an old friend of Mama's. So anyways, standing there, eating, and then the Lockton's come. Apparently, they need two little girls to mend to their house in New York. Well... This, her nephew liked this. He sold us, but we're free. He can't sell us. <sighs> Jenny tried to stop it. She tried to buy, but they doubled their price. Snatch us right up, if you ask me. Shoes and all. <sighs> now we're on our way to New York. I don't know what's going to happen. <sighs> will I mend the garden? Or will I do all the chores in the house? I can't cook. I don't want to leave Rhode Island. My life is in Rhode Island. My home is in Rhode Island. Mama's grave is in Rhode Island. Ruth is just so small. I don't know if she can deal with this sort of pressure. <sighs> I don't know what I will do. But I must fight on. I am a free woman, and I know that. It was wrong of Miss Mary Finch's nephew to sell us, and I will fight for my freedom. If I die trying, so be it. It all started a long time ago, on the ship ride to New York. Me and Ruth were in the bottom of the ship. <sighs> then the people came and took us up. They said we had landed in New York, but I didn't want to be in New York. Oh, my. When I got up on the deck, I saw another slave. I believe his name was Curzon, he, and he was wearing a red hat. He was a slave of Mr. Bellingham. <sighs> Mr. Bellingham stopped the Lockton's on the deck told them that they weren't allowed to be in New York because they were royals and New York was a patriot town. They just lied. They said they were patriots, but they weren't. I guess it just saved them from being searched through all their bags. I can't believe bad people bought us. Are they bad people? Oh. This boy named Curzon led me to the tea water pump. He ran. I could barely keep up with him. He brought me there. He taught, introduced me to Grandfather and told me if he had any news to tell him. I should have just listened to my instinct that day, telling him nothing. I mean, I was there to get me and Ruth out, not to help the Patriots or Rebels. I should have listened to him. When I arrived back at the house, there was a house servant. Becky, I believe, was her name. She taught me the ways of the Lockton house through the next year. Hmm. Throughout the year, I brought notes to the Patriots. Because I was the servant to Mr. Lockton. I spied in on Hollis meetings. But in return, they gave me the code Adestrata. They told me to get into the camp so I could repay what was mine to bring me and Ruth back to Rhode Island. They should have kept that end of the deal. That was a sad day when I went back. <sighs> Finally, Madam found out that Ruth had fits. She didn't want to keep the devil in her house. Said she wasn't her personal servant anymore. Cursed her to the kitchen. And then when she was in the kitchen, to the basement. 
It was terrible. She said that she was going to sell Ruth. Mr. Lockton helped. He said, no, they are sisters. You will not sell them. But Madam didn't listen. I remember the day she sold Ruth. Oh, it was a terrible day. The night before, she had given me warm milk. Oh, it was so good. Spices that I couldn't even have. <sighs> I laid down in bed that night, not thinking about where Ruth was, figuring she would be in bed soon. Mm, what a good night. I woke up that morning, wondering where Ruth was. I went up to the kitchen. Becky... Becky told me that Ruth had been sold. It was terrible. I couldn't believe what Madam had done. Ruth was just five years old. Five years old. How could you sell my little sister? I went up to Madam. I asked her. Did you sell Ruth? She she answered me. Yes. I ran. I ran so far, so far. I ran for so far and so long, all the way to the Patriots camp. I gave them the code Autostrata to the stars. I ran until I found the captain. I was only going to talk to him. I barged into his tent while he was in the middle of a shave. <sighs> I told him I needed out. I needed to find my sister. She was only five years old. Madam came into the tent, told him that I was hers, but that it wasn't fair. She had sold my sister, and I didn't want to be around her. The captain, not looking in my eyes, not wanting to see the guilt that he has left upon me, gave me back to Madam. I ran. I ran out the window. I woke up in jail, cold metal cell, my stomach growling. Oh, where was I? What had I done? I soon remembered Ruth was gone. Ruth was gone. Oh, oh my. I fell back asleep. Next time I woke up, I was being walked to the stocks. There was blacksmith there. He had a letter I imprint. I fell asleep again. I woke up again. Burning, searing to my face. Oh, searing into my face. It was terrible, a terrible thing. Next time I woke up, I was at Lady Seymour's house. Her German maid came in. She screamed, ran out. Next thing I know, Lady Seymour was there. Hi, Isabel. As you may know, I'm Lady Seymour. <sighs> I stayed in Lady Seymour's house for a few days. They said I was mending to her, but really she was mending to me. Next thing I know, there was a fire. Her house went up in flames. The whole city was under fire. I grabbed her picture of her husband. I tried to grab the rest, but there was too much fire. I grabbed her in the picture and we ran out. Apparently, grabbing that picture is something she would never forget. We went to the Lockton's house, where we stayed the rest of my days in New York. They had brought in some people, some captains, things like that. I visited Curzon every day. The rebel army had been caught and put into jail, as you see. The British had taken over. <sighs> I went to see Curzon, brought him food. I made a bargain and kept him alive, for I did not want him to die after everything he had done for me. I brought notes to the captain and everything. He told me that he had made a bet with Captain William Farr, another captain that was. <sighs> I had to give him that. I gave him his money, and in return, he said, Thank you, Sal. I should have just ran away there. But no, I went back. Madam Lockton had found out about it. She was furious. She wanted the note that Captain William Farr had given me. I said no. I threw it in the fire. 
she locked me in the potato bin, said that my little brat of a sister couldn't even be sold, and that she was in Charleston in their house. Oh, what a joy that had given me. My sister was in walking distance. <sighs> me being locked in the potato bin stayed there until I realized nobody was in the house. This was my time, for it was the night of the Queen's Ball. I escaped using logic that I had from when I was with Ruth laying in the cellar down there. I got out. I ran. Everybody was gone, even Hannah. I ran, and then I realized... I can't leave Curzon. He has done so much for me. So I ran back to the jail. I told him, the guard, that I was cleaning out the jail. I put Curzon in the wheelbarrow and wheeled him out. We ran together. We s then rented a boat. Not rented, I should say. We stole a boat. And we paddled over the Jordan River. Off and on, off and on, off and on, off and on. All night long. We finally arrived on the other side of the Jordan River. We were on the way to save my sister. Hello. So as you can see, this is my vlog of chains. And I'm Isabel, branded with an I, or as she says, her scar for Isabel, because everybody has scars. Um, her and Curzon successfully have escaped across the Jordan River. Now they've got much more of that ahead on their way to Charleston. So as you can see, I did my beginning, which was after the Locktons had just bought them. My middle, which is when, um, just after Ruth was sold. And then my end, which was after they sailed across the Jordan River. So I send my wishes to fictional Ruth. And then most of all, um, Isabel and Curzon as they make their way back to Charleston. This production was made by Eleanor Richardson, written by Eleanor Richardson, acted by Eleanor Richardson. Bye!